Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm glad you're here today. My name is Gabriel Varga. I'm the pastor here at the Daytona Rescue Mission and the Ridgewood Avenue Baptist Church. I don't have to tell that to my church people because you know that, but that's for those that are out in the viewing audience uh, in the internet. I got a little change in plans this morning. I've many times on Sunday morning, I, I uh, think about things, read things, and I usually try to decide what I'm going to preach on Sunday morning uh, a couple of days ahead of time, but sometimes it's the last moment like it has been this morning. Watched a, a sermon yesterday. It, it came came up on the YouTube. I was looking for something else, but this came up on there and uh, I, I don't I didn't know the preacher. In fact, I can't even, I think his name might be Chris Holland. I don't I I showed it to the people just before church today, those that were here earlier. And uh, it, so it's a very moving uh, sermon in um I'm trying to think of the name of it now. But anyway, it moved me to preach this sermon on Acts chapter 2 today about what the church is. And I, I recommend highly that you'll read it. At the end at the end of the service, I'll, I'll give that to you, what it is. I'll even forward it to you if you want. Um, I've, I've put it, I've posted it on my Facebook. I don't know much about Facebook. I just kind of preach on there. That's about it. But it's posted on Facebook. I, I just posted it. So it's there. You can see it. If if you can get this on Facebook, you can get that. Because I just posted it on there like just a little bit ago. I like your new appearance, Joshua. Look good. Man, yeah. Smiling the whole deal. Acts chapter 2. D.L. Moody the man used of God more than anybody in the uh, 19th century. And when I say 19th century, that means in the, in the uh, 1800s. He died in 1899 at 60 years old. Can you imagine that? Uh, the man that the Holy Ghost used lost weight, man. You okay? Yeah. Good to see you. I didn't. I, I knew your face, <laughs> but I I couldn't identify you because you've lost quite a bit of weight. How much you lose? Enough. I lost fifty pounds. Just a little talk before I start preaching because I I, I drove on a preach on that day, but. I put pants on this morning, four sizes smaller Amen. than four months ago, and I lost 50 pounds. Joe, do, do I look a little thinner, Joe? I see it. You see it? Good. Now you got to buy all new clothes. No, I don't. Like I said, I just put these pants on this morning. They're from a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, I just pile them up, man, take them back out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got... Fat time, skinny time, fat time. Now, I mean, I hope it's going to be skinny time the rest of the way. Probably will be because I'm old and should be dead already. I'm 81, so hopefully it'll be skinny time now on out. I don't know. <laughs> these are old pants. And if it good, I remember when these, oh, forget it. I'm, let's get to the Bible. Amen. This is great summer. You're right. Amen. But D.L. Moody, he said this. He said, by the way, D.L. Moody had a, a third grade education. How, how, how many of you have been hired in the third grade in school? Oh, yeah. Okay, most everybody in here. Uh, I think everybody's in here. We had born in third grade. But if a guy had third grade education and, and, and you couldn't read his writing, and, and he didn't talk real well. And God used him 
more than any man in the 19th century. Preached to millions of people and hundreds of thousands got saved. The great, the great D.L. Moody, evangelist, died at 60 in 1899. He made comment of Acts chapter 2 that it is the specimen for the church in all ages. That means it was it started out there in Acts chapter 2 a couple thousand years ago. And it's the same today. But it's unrecognizable today because we're so far removed from it we think it impossible and crazy. Yeah. So turn to Acts chapter 2, church. I hope you all got it. If someone needs help, we got all real Bibles in here. That's King James Bible. There ain't no other Bible in the English language other than King James Bible. Throw away your Luciferian Bibles. Get your King James Bible. Chapter 2. Anybody need one? Get him one? Help you? If you don't know how to read, I'll have someone read it to you. Watch me, listen to me. The specimen church. What we should have today. Today. Here. Across the world. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now that was a holy religious day, the day of Pentecost. They were all with one accord in one place. So we're going to get on the same page. Amen. Amen. Morning, Sharon. Morning, Doris. Morning. My, my faithful Doris, my dear friend, 97. One of the godliest people I know on earth, my friend Doris. She found this preacher many years ago had about tackled me to get my attention. <laughs> Been my dear friend ever since. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. You know, the devil's a master of division. How, how, how many of you... Uh, that you've been maybe with a family member or a friend or, or some that that Satan I said Satan has brought division into your life with someone and you can directly attribute it and say it's Satan that has done this does anyone here can identify with that like I can? Anybody? Anybody? Huh? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. They were all with one accord in one place. So first of all, in order to have God's church like they had in Acts chapter 2, you got to have uh, God's way, all, one accord. So you got to get people that are what? Like-minded. It means they're all on the same page. You know what that page is? King James Bible page. <laughs> From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. There's all on that page and all the pages in between. Amen? Amen. The reason we ain't in, in accord. Oh, the stupid thing. Get off of here. It, it, it's crazy. We just had a message on that, on that smartphone thing. And it, while I'm preaching here. This stupid Spartan is just bam, 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 bam. Stuff because I'm, because I'm on the smart. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not very smart. I'm smart enough to get on here and preach on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. Some may have to tell me later. Maybe in the, I, you can't tell me now, but maybe you can get some way that when I'm preaching like this, that uh, the stupid thing won't keep blasting in my face. It says this and this, 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 Newsmax and this one and that. And there's a way to block it. It's got to be. I mean, they just they bomb you, don't they? They just boom, 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 boom. I don't have that phone. You don't have a phone. That's right. Good girl. I don't have that phone. 
You 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 got to listen to this sermon. This this dude preached. Shouldn't call him dude. He's a respectful preacher. I don't even know what denomination he's. he's you mean you ain't sure he's a Baptist? I ain't sure he's a Baptist, but he sure preached like a Baptist. Yeah. You know what a Baptist preached like? An old-time fundamental Baptist, he preached the Bible. He used the King James Bible. He told the truth. Now, I'm for him. I don't care what he calls himself. You say, oh. I'm just for Bible people. I don't care about nothing, nothing else. One day Pentecost was fully cut and they were all of one accord in one place and suddenly, see this kind of stuff comes, boom! The real church comes like this, boom! You don't educate people into it. Didn't educate D.L. Moody into it, had third grade education. Theologians and denominations and churches in general, religion in general, made fun of Moody and shunned him because he was an ignorant person that couldn't talk right. You couldn't read his writing. The only way you could read his letters is he had a niece that could read his letters. That's the only way you could get it. God used Moody more than anybody in the 19th century. He died in 1899 at 60 years old. Through the power of God. Moody said Acts chapter 2 was a specimen for the church. It means that's what our church should be today. And your church. Don't. Don't worry about what I'm all about. Don't worry about what Emma's all about. Worry about what your church should be, preacher. Match it up with Acts chapter 2. Don't match it up to no church on earth that is or have has ever been. Just match it up to the original, amen? See, I've got the original. I've got the original. If you don't have an original Bible, you better get it. Because without it, you can't go to heaven. The original. Get the original church. Let's just go back to the original deal. I'm not going to go through the languages, they were known languages. They weren't the foolishness of today, of so-called heavenly languages that started in the early 1900s, the modern-day tongues movement. Look how God worked so powerfully in the 1800s through D.L. Moody, and in the 1800s, uh, Charles Haddon Spurgeon into the 1900s, and the 1800s, Charles Finney, and the 1800s, many other men of God and women of God that were greatly used of God in the Welsh revivals and e even into the 1900s. Ain't much going on in the 2000s. <laughs> Not much. Gotta go back to 1900s. A little bit happened in, the, in, in, in that period of 100 years from 1900 to uh, 2000, but there ain't much happening in 2000 to 221, you know that? Not much I know about. Would you say with me, Lord, do it again? Huh? Could, could you say, do it again? Yeah. I say, Lord, do it again. Yeah. Do it here. Do it everywhere. Do it again. Going past the heavenly language, not the heavenly languages. The, <laughs> the God knows English. He knows Polish. He knows German. He knows Hungarian. He knows everything. This was just known languages. Sixteen different language groups. Pro preached the blockbuster sermon. Read it over. I'm not going to read it to you. And, uh, Great sermon. Great sermon. 
Verse 37, let's go down to there. Read the rest of it yourself. I could preach a sermon on each, almost each one of these verses, but we're going to go past the sermon. You read it on your own, okay, later? Let's pick it up at verse 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. You know what that means to be pricked in your heart? It's, it's like it's the Holy Ghost. Like when I watched this preacher this morning on this, uh, uh, talking about the the smartphone and uh, digital communications, and it touched my heart and it brought a tear to my eye. And by the way, it, it moved some of the folks in church today, and we listened to it, and we actually stop listening to the sermon at eight minutes before 10. And I said, let's just pray for eight minutes. You know what? Listen, listen, church members. How, how many of you say to be silent and just don't talk to each other, nothing, just be there silent with God for eight minutes? Seems like a long time. Did it see that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now listen, not that I'm any anything but I do spend time with God. But it even shocked me how long it seemed to me. And not that I'm anybody. But eight minutes alone just focusing hopefully on God and trying to get connected with Him. That's what we need, amen? Don't get disattached. Get attached to God. Now, when they heard they were pricked in their heart, I hope you're pricked in your heart today, church. I hope you're pricked in your heart today, Facebook, YouTube. And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? I said, what do you say? What shall we do? What shall we do? Let's cry out to God. What shall we do? Bunch of wicked sinners. Read that sermon over. You'll see how he, boy, that was a, you talk about hell, fire, and brimstone preaching. That sermon, you read it over in Acts chapter 2. Then Peter, the one that just preached that sermon, what did he tell him? Repent. Repent. I've got all kinds of things out here. Gonna, uh, my friend Eddie, he's been one of my new partners. We, we work together. He's going to carry signs out. he come in today, first thing in church. He says, you got the signs, Pastor? That's right. <laughs> Keep after me, Eddie. That's right. <coughs> I got some prices. I didn't like the prices I got it. I was out at the flea market. I had to get something else out there I needed. Some things you can <coughs> get out the flea market pretty reasonable. Oh, I got some hats. I'm going to get more of them. I got two. Hey, Donnie. Donnie, come here. I got out of my out of my pilot uh, in a back seat. There was a plastic bag got two hats in it. Right. I got the hats. I wanted them, and then my wife needed something. And but you just you get at the flea market, you know something. There's some stuff out there, and not bad price either. So, and there's some stuff you, you can get cheaper out there at the Daytona flea market than you can off of Amazon even. And Amazon's usually pretty cheap. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So he says, get saved, repent, and get the Holy Ghost on you. Now let me just say this. The moment you get saved, how many of you know you're saved and you remember when you got saved? Okay, all right, good. Now, if you, you need to get saved. For you that don't know and you're not sure, you need to get saved today. Because the Bible says that, that everyone needs to repent. Everybody needs to repent. Hey, dinner on my sermon. I'm going to get more of them. They got some other. This is about the only ones I, I really like. Now, here's a. This one I had on out at the, at the flea market yesterday. I love Jesus. Yeah. Thanks. Very 
Huh? You like it? Anybody in here a Christian enough to wear a hat like this? Oh, yeah. Hey, if I see you need on your head, I'm going to get out of my van, get out of there in Ridgewood and beat. I'm, hey, I'm a, listen, Joshua, I'm going to beat the tar out of you. Jesus is my boss. Amen. I love Jesus. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Anyone else got enough? There you go. Jennifer had her hand up first. I'll have to get you one. Oh, they just bought two. Anybody else? Anybody? I, I, I'm going to get more. <coughs> that. I'll take a special ride out there to get some. How, how many of you want some nice hat like that? I mean, Eddie had his hat up, David. Yeah. Frank, when I see you at your post, you better have it on. Or I'll come and hit you on top of your bald head. <laughs> hey, that'll keep the sun off your bald head, Frank. Marcel got two bucks for one a few years back. Huh? Who got two dollars? Marceau, remember he sold it. That's okay. I'm, oh, that's okay. That. I'm glad someone else wanted. Hey, I'm glad someone wanted enough to give him two bucks for it. <laughs> you know how much I got to pay for him? How, how much do you think I paid for them hands? Get this. Oh no, it wasn't zero. No, they don't. They don't. They ain't giving away at the flea market. They're selling two for five. That's a good deal. Usually I pay five. I usually pay five. These are two for five. I got two of them. And they ain't bad. I, that would fit me pretty. And it's got adjustable Velcro on it. Bye, bye, bye. Nice. Yeah, Pastor, I want one of those. And then when, when we walk out, when we have the signs out in front, Eddie, we're going to have the hats on. Okay. Yeah. I'll get, I'm going to get hats today. Usually I, I don't go shopping out there on Sunday. I just, you know, pray and that. But I'm going to go out there today and... Give me a bunch of hats. Amen? <laughs> Receive the gift for the promise. The promise of what? Verse 39. The promise of the Holy Ghost filling. Woo! <laughs> Holy Ghost filling. The promise is to you and your children... And to all that are far off, that's me. 2,000 years later, here I am, afar off. I get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Who do I take my example from? Moody? No. Oh, no. Jack Hiles? No. God. Spurgeon? Charles Haddon Spurgeon? No. Had the great Metropolitan Tabernacle in England. Thousands. Call the Prince of Preachers. Shall I take, shall I take my example from Spurgeon's tap? No. no. Get your example from the Bible. The one that Moody said was a specimen church. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, what does that mean? Save yourself from this untoward generation. You know what it means? This world is wicked. And did you know that there's not, nothing new under the sun? Did you know that as wicked as it was then, when the day of Pentecost came, ten days after, listen, ten days after Jesus ascended to heaven, the Holy Ghost came with power. I said with power. You know, numbers don't always mean, you know, we've got great gatherings today, quote, so-called Christian evangelical gatherings. They ain't at all. You know what they are? Music fests. They're rock and roll, hip-hop, weirdo, worldly music fests. I'm talking about 
passion. I'm talking about Hillsong and all the rest of them. Hillsong is probably the biggest name in them. Big rock and roll sessions in Christianity. And they're patterning. I know, I know churches here. I know churches here, they're trying to pattern yourself after passion. Why don't you get Acts chapter 2 and pattern yourself after Acts chapter 2. Amen? Amen, Amen church? Amen. That's what church I want to have here. And with many other words, he testify and exhort, save yourself from this untoward generation. It's a wicked world. But there's a marvelous, glorious, spirit-filled church that is exemplified and is our example here in Acts chapter 2. This is what we should be now. Verse 41. Here it is. Listen. Read it. Got your Bible open? Come on. Read it with me. Come on, out there, internet. And they that were and they that gladly received his word, that's the saved people. What happened to them? They baptized them. I got a baptistry here. I can baptize you if you haven't been baptized yet since you've been saved. And the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls. Woo! I like that. How many of them was there when Jesus went up? 120. What do you tell them? Pray till the power comes. What did they do? Prayed for 10 days. What happened? The power came. And they got our example for the church today. Listen to, listen to this. You're going to like this, Josh. I think Josh is getting it today. Amen. Got a couple others. I'm looking around in here. They ain't getting it yet. Some people been coming to church and sitting around here for years ain't got it yet. So glad you're back. I love your smile. Huh. Now here we go. Listen. How many of you say, I'm a true born-again Christian. I've given God my heart. You got it? Okay. Amen. And it says, and they continue. That means you and me. Steadfastly. You know what that means? You know what steadfastly means? I'm going to do it or die. I'm going to do it or die. Steadfastly. In the Apostles' Doctrine. What's the Apostles' Doctrine? King James Bible. King James Bible. Not what some theologian said. Not what some wannabe leaders said. But I'm talking about the Holy Word of God. And fellowship. Fellowship. You see, the fellowship of the church is not the fellowship of the world. When you get into fellowship with the church, you fall out of fellowship with the world. You separate from it. You understand? That's what the Bible teaches. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. Look at verse 43. See, here's what you don't have. There ain't no fear of God today. Listen, listen, listen. Look at verse 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Healings and, and feedings of multitudes and and the raising of the dead. And I mean, I'm talking about miracle miracles. I'm not, I, I'm talking about stuff that was actually supernaturally through the power of God. Is that what you want? That's what I want. You want that? How many of you need a miracle? You need a miracle. Amen. You need a miracle. And fear came upon every soul. You got to fear God. You ain't going to get no, you can't, you know, you can't even get saved till you fear God. I'm talking to a lot of people right now who think they're Christians. And they think they're good and they don't fear God. You know what? They're going to hell. They're going to split hell wide open. Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And you ain't going to get saved till you're wise. God's wisdom. 
and all that believed. Now, what does that mean? How many saved people does that include? What it says, and all that believed were together. Uh, does that include 50%? Huh? Come on, church. Well, how, how many people does it include if it says all that believed? That's 100%, huh? It means this should be every single saved person. Not just one in a million. Not just one in a thousand. Not just one in a hundred. Not just one in ten. Every Christian. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Whoa. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out, selfish one. Watch out, we that want to get the biggest piece of chicken. <laughs> You don't, you, don't want, you don't want to read this, especially you people that got stuff out there on Facebook. You don't, you, you, you don't want verse 45. Oh, yeah. I mean, the homeless, the homeless person ain't got nothing but a shirt and a hat and a pair of shoes and a knapsack and a blanket that someone given them that live in the woods. They ain't gonna have much, that kind of Christian ain't going to have much problem with this. But if you've got a lot of stuff, you're going to have a problem with this. <laughs> That's why it's so hard for a rich man to get saved, you know? They won't give up the stuff. Sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Now, if you ain't got much, that ain't worth nothing. You ain't got much to give up, do you? Huh? Should you be willing to? What if you got a lot? That's different, isn't it? It ain't different. It ain't different. It ain't different. It ain't different. Sold their possessions, goods, and parted them to all men as every man had need. And that ain't the dirty, filthy, Leninist, Marxist communism that they're trying to sell to America now and put them in bondage and make a slave out of you. That's what's trying to go on in America today. They won't give you Lenin communism. They, they, they ain't for everyone being equal. There ain't, you, you, know what, you know what Leninist communism does? They want to make you a slave. You want to talk about, they talk a lot about slavery. They won't make a slave out of you. Verse 46. And they continued daily. Did it say just on Sunday? Did you know that in New Testament Christianity that the day of the week didn't mean anything? Meant nothing. They had no holy days. We've, we've traditionally made Sunday a holy day. It ain't a holy day. It ain't no holier than any other day. Oh, you're mad at me now. Even a lot of my Baptist, independent, fundamental Baptists say the holy days are Sunday and got to have three services a week. Two on Sunday and one on Wednesday night. Bless God. How about 10 every day, amen? Hey? How about every day all the time? Why, here in the book of Acts, they had, they had not one church house. They preached in the old wicked religious synagogues and religious institutions. They preached in the fields. They preached in the homes. They preached on the streets. They had church everywhere because the word church ain't got nothing to do with the building. The word church has to do with assembly or gathering. Continued daily with one accord in the temple. That's the old religious place. And breaking of bread from house to house. That's What do you think house to house means? I really think if you think real carefully about it, it means house to house. Amen. <laughs> it means you go to this house, then you go to the next house, then you go to the next house. That ain't rocket science, is it? Huh? Where are you going to have church? House to house. <laughs> Did eat their meat 
with gladness and with singleness of heart. There you got the unity again. Singleness of heart. Unselfish. Sell what you got. Give to others. How many of you are for that? You're for it if, it, if others do it, but not, not you. <laughs> I'm, I'm for it too if others do it, not me. Huh? Am I telling the truth on this or what? Huh? Come on. Am I telling the truth, Joe? Yeah. Come on, Joe. Am I telling the truth? Uh, we all we want for someone. No, we want for someone else. No. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah. What do you think, Frank? I got double Frank here today. I got, I got Frank and then I got Wolf. Eh? Is it Wolf or Fox? Wolf. I got two Franks and I said we got to have to say Frank 1 and Frank 2, but no. Donnie says, no, we call him Wolf. What's going on? What did he do to lose his phone? He didn't mess it. He was sleeping. He, uh, David likes sleep through the heavy preaching. <laughs> there ain't no two Davids, David. It's only one David in here today. <laughs> Sorry to say it's you. With gladness, gladness and singleness of heart. Joshua, what do you think the sing singleness of heart means here? It means the love of the, of the Word of God and the fellowship of the Heavenly Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, and that we can just get all hooked up in that and get all away from the world. Amen? Amen. Then we got our own little thing going, don't we? That's called church. Where did it meet? Anywhere. Just so to assemble us together. We'll sing in this of heart. Fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, through the blessed Holy Scriptures, English language, King James Bible. Verse 47, and we're done. Praising God. Would you say with me this morning? Praise the Lord. Would you raise your hands up and say, Praise the Lord. Praise you fundamental independent Baptists, Pharisees that never raised your hands to praise God in your life, shame on you. This old time fundamental independent Baptist church preacher raised his hand, and my whole congregation did too. Everybody but one that's sleeping. He just, no, he wasn't sleeping, just had his eyes closed. But he wouldn't praise the Lord. <laughs> God bless you. He's my friend. <laughs> Let's do it once again, amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All but three. Got all but three. Praise the Lord. All but three. Maybe we'll get them praising the Lord too. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Now, not with the lost people. Because you, you know what you know what the devil's people go? They're gonna hate us. Oh, yeah. yeah, lost people gonna hate us. You got a lost brother, sister, mother, father, son or daughter, whatever. They're gonna hate you. Why? Because they don't have the spirit of God. He said. They got, they got the same blood running in you. That's all. They, uh, 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 I have fellowship through the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, not through blood in my veins. You understand? Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Fellowship don't come through blood in your veins. It comes through the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Which people? The saved people. And the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. Isn't that good? That's it. That was the church then, the beginning of the Spirit-filled New Testament church in Acts chapter 2. And it should be our church today. And your church out there, preacher. You're in a congregation, read it to your preacher. Tell them that's what your church ought to be. Let's pray, Lord. Thank you. Love you, Lord Jesus. This is it. The church. Acts chapter 2. 
the origin, the New Testament church. Fill us with thy spirit, dear Lord. Help us to yield to it. Make it happen in our church here. If you're not saved, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You need to repent today. Call upon God. Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I know I'm a wicked sinner. My heart is desperately wicked. Please turn away from your high-minded, pharisaical heart. Get a broken heart and repent. Say, Lord, I have a wicked heart. A desperately wicked heart. I come from generations of wicked people starting in the Garden of Eden. I repent and claim the blood of Christ. I hope you do that today. I hope if you've done it in the past and you're backslidden now, that you'll repent. Repentance is something that's needed daily for ever, ever to be saved initially and then every day of a Christian's life must repent. Sometimes, many times a day. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to have a New Testament church here, Acts chapter 2 church. Help it to happen all around this world. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.